musical makers and sonorous sirens of code. It's Prof G, and it's time to talk sound on the Raspberry Pi Pico boards. For those who follow the CircuitPython School playlist and use my university course, you know it's remarkably easy to get the Pico to play sounds. Just add a standard powered speaker, clip a ground and digital pin to the speaker's audio plug, bass and tip respectively, write some simple code, and you're playing WAV files or MP3s. Super easy, but not perfect. If you play WAV or MP3 files using this technique, you'll notice a click sound just before and after you play a sound. Code or code not, there is no try. A code monster you have become. Skilled you are. The reason for this is that the Picos, I've used both Pico and Pico 2Ws in my course, don't have what's called a DAC or digital audio converter built into the hardware. So in this lesson, I'm going to show you how you can add a low-cost DAC for better Pico audio. Now without a DAC, Pico boards use what's called PWM or pulse width modulation when playing sound. And the details aren't super important for our course, but without a digital audio converter, Clicks or pops occur when the board takes the PWM audio engine from its undriven state to its silent state. Now a voltage change causes the click, and that happens at the start and end of playing any audio file. Now in an earlier lesson I showed you how you can eliminate these clicks and pops by using an all software approach with the CircuitPython audio mixer library. But adding the low cost DAC hardware I'm about to show you does an even better job of eliminating all clicks, including the one that occurs when the audio mixer first starts. Now another issue with the Picos, standard Pico PWM audio doesn't allow you to take full advantage of the CircuitPython SynthIO library, which lets you create cool mathematically generated electronic sounds like the ones I use in the Sonic Pillar sculpture that vary sound based on how close you are to a pillar. First, wah wah. The other three need to be have good pillars associated with them. But hopefully this will be fun for folks to interact with. And we'll put it in the hallway, maybe when you come into the engineering building. Keep Super sound. cool. But you need a DAC to take advantage of this. So by adding an inexpensive hardware DAC, we can both get rid of the clicks during file play and enable synth IO. The DAC I'll show is the Adafruit PCM5102. It's only $4.95 US and comes with a standard audio jack. That's probably cheaper than the last coffee you got at Starbucks. And your audio will be more stable plugged into a jack than it would be if you alligator clipped it to the audio pin. Now there's also a PCM5100 that's just a dollar cheaper with slightly less audio quality. That'll actually be fine for most projects, especially important if you're an educator buying in bulk on a budget. Now this works great for any speaker that has its own power supply. But if you want to use a speaker that runs off the same power as your microcontroller, you'll need an amplifier. The simple hamburger speakers that I'm using have their own power supply, so they have an amp. You don't need one of those. But I'll show you how to add an amp in another video. Doing so removes a lot of speaker bulk, so adding an amp can be a great thing to do if you want to, for example, put a speaker inside of a toy. Hi! I like your opposable thumbs! But since you want a DAC on a Pico, even if you're using an amp, we're going to start here. Now wiring this DAC up to our Pico requires power, ground, and three additional wires for word select, data, and bit clock. So it's not too complex. And programming this bad boy is super easy. Now one more thing to be aware of, the audio jack on the DAC can't drive headphones. Or at least not the passive kind that don't have power. You can use powered headphones like the noise cancelling type if they specifically say that they accept line level input. But I want to get rid of those audio clicks and play synth IO, so let's build. Now this board comes without the pins attached, so you're going to need to do a little bit of soldering. There are six pins on one side, eight pins on the other. And as always, I strongly recommend that you use flux when soldering. Now I'm not especially good at soldering, even though I've been doing so for years, but flux helps the solder flow right to where it needs to go. My work is way better when I use flux. If your board's sticky after using flux, you can just clean it off with some alcohol or alcohol wipes. Now once soldered up, you can straddle the DAC board across the ravine of your breadboard. You want to position it so that the audio jack is pointed outward so that you can easily plug an external speaker in if you're using one. Now here are the Pico pins I recommend wiring to. VIN on the DAC should go to VBUS on the Pico. GND on the DAC should go to any Pico ground. WCell or Word Select on the DAC should go to the Pico's G9 pin. DIN for Digital In should go to the Pico's GP11 pin. And the board's BCK, that's the bit clock that tells the DAC when to read data, is wired here to the Pico's GP10. 
Now you can fit both boards onto a half size breadboard. It's tight, but it'll work. And another pro tip, if you're a Pico user, I love the Monk Mix boards because they have the Pico pinouts right on the breadboard, so they're easy to find. Now the pins I've selected should not conflict with the Pico Cowbell with Ada Logger. This is another board my students use because it adds an SD card reader with a built-in Stemma QT port. It's a great board that cuts down wiring, especially if you use an SD card for gigabytes of additional audio. Now if you do use the Ada Logger Cowbell, the SD card will get a little cramped, so you might want to expand to a second breadboard or a larger board. There's not a monk makes for larger boards, but these breadboards snap together. So you're soldered and wired up, here's all you need to do. And here's a comparison with the old setup we did with the inferior PWM audio. Remember that was PWM or pulse width modulation. When we use this approach, we're sort of faking the shape of a sound wave. And here we use the DAC with PCM or pulse code modulation, which actually writes the shape of the wave. And that analog smoothness from the DAC instead of faking things will actually prevent the voltage spikes that create the clicks with the other method. So in our new code, we're swapping out audio PWM IO with I2S, which stands for Inner IC sound. It's a communication method between chip and board that's used for transmitting high quality digital audio data. We still import board, audio bus IO, and since we're playing MP3s, we'll also, from audio MP3, import MP3 decoder. But then there's just one setup line. We create an audio object with audio bus IO dot I2S out, and we pass in the three pins that we set up. Bit clock equals board.gp10 in our example, word select to board.gp9, and data to board.gp11. And once we got that set up, the rest of our code is identical to any MP3 or wave code that we learned about earlier. So since we're using MP3s in this example, we're going to set up the path for our sound file. We're going to create an MP3 decoder using a valid MP3 file that we put in our sounds folder on our CircuitPy board. We'll have the same play underscore MP3 function that we used earlier. And just to try things out, we'll play the two sounds that we used earlier when we noticed clicking with the old PWM audio setup. Code or code not, there is no try. A code monster you have become. Skilled you are. No clicks. Cool. And we can now swap out this code for wave code or even audio mixer code if you'd like. So I have setup code I can copy and paste. I'm going to save this to my CircuitPy folder as dac-and-mp3.py and close the outermost tab. We queued up more big learning. We got an intro to DACs, which are digital to analog converters. We compared DAC PCM audio to the inferior PWM audio that we were using earlier. Using a DAC, we can eliminate clicks, and we gain the ability to use the sophisticated sounds of the SynthIO library. And we wired up an Adafruit PCM 5102 DAC. The wiring is the same for the 5100, which is just a dollar cheaper. All we needed was power, ground, and three additional wires, and just a single line of code, which replaced two lines of code with PWM audio. You're now in the higher quality sound business. And you're also ready to add an amp to the Pico if you want, and to try out all the goodness of Synth.io. So hack on Sonorous One and make something awesome.